Hi there, and welcome to Ask Material, a show where the material design team answers questions from the community. My name is Ivy Knight, a design advocate on the material design team. On today's Ask Material, we'll be answering some of your questions regarding designing for Android on large screens. Our first question concerns navigation. They ask, what navigation patterns are more usable on large screens and how do they affect other components? I have seen some tablet and desktop apps have a side navigation rail that expands into a side drawer and others treat the side nav rail that functions like a bottom nav on mobile. Is either of these most correct? Is it okay to use the bottom navigation bar on large screens? Yes, there are navigation patterns that are more ergonomic, meaning easier to physically reach and are more efficient use of space within your layout. Consider the layout regions. For larger devices, the navigation area should be located to the side instead of the bottom of the screen. The nav rail has better ergonomics than bottom navigation on larger devices, since a bottom navigation require greater hand or mouse movement for tablets and desktops. Speaking of the nav rail, the fab or floating action button can be affected with the option of sticking to the nav rail, which helps group primary navigation and CTA all together. Our next question is, do material components adapt to large screens and how? Are there any components to make sure to adapt on larger screens? Components can and should adapt to larger breakpoints. Some components can create a less ergonomic experience if used in the wrong breakpoint. Dialogues fit this scenario. Utilizing full screen dialogues on a large screen can force content to fill up the space, making the user move around the screen too much, but also make sure to adjust your dialogues so they aren't too small in the space. Bottom sheets are also to be avoided for awkward layouts. Our last question for today's video, what are some easy methods to use to adapt layouts to larger screens and what should I avoid? Well, considering the shift in layout regions from mobile to the large screen, the content and components can adjust by revealing the elements that are, were hidden in smaller breakpoints, for example, showing the full drawer menu on tablets. Components may need to be repositioned to adjust for the larger space. Elements can reflow to fit their ergonomic and input needs. You can utilize white space as containment to reflow content to columns and allow images and type to adapt to the breakpoint. For example, Repositioning Elform's inputs and helper text to reflow into columns gives more easy to reach inputs and contextual info side by side. My last adaptive method tip is to set margins and center content that keep balance at certain breakpoints so it doesn't flow the full width. Which brings me to some things to avoid. Allowing content to be completely fluid on all screens can make for a cumbersome and unpolished experience. As we covered with navigation, make sure to use the right components for the breakpoint. And last thing to avoid would be not considering how the content adjusts for the larger screen. A larger screen will mean type will appear smaller and people may be further back in general from the screen. Thanks for joining me. It's been great to answer your adaptive design questions. You can check out m3.material.io for the latest adaptive guidance. And remember, if you have questions you'd like to see featured in an episode of Ask Material, comment below or ask on Twitter at Material Design. There's plenty more great content to come, so subscribe to our channel to stay tuned. Thanks for watching. <laughs>